G'day, how you going? I'm Ian Apples, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's tutorial is all about brushes. How to use the brushes you have. Oh, well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the brushes I have anyway. And if you have any of these brushes or similar, and you like to follow my methods of painting, you can learn how to use your brushes. Because some people buy a brush and just assume they know how to pick it up, load it up, and start painting away. But there's so many facets with your art journey, knowing how to paint certain things. And a brush is one facet. And in a brush, whether it's this sort of brush or that sort of brush, there's so many facets about that. How you load it, what are you gonna paint with it, whether you're gonna block in, are you gonna do some trees or detail, how you load it up. There's so many facets about brushes and this video is going to show you as much as I can touch on so come on over here get a close look at me canvas and me palette and what I'm going to do for you today now there are many brushes you're going to use I use blending brushes now these are the type that I use if you ever want these type of blending brushes and my putter on a brush simply message me and I'll send you some out but I use them for blending and I use this for putting on the first parts of the paint in me painting which is a putter on a brush now you get fans filberts uh, flat filberts, uh, little rounds, all types which are here. You get your flats. I use a lot of flats. And you also get detail brushes, ones with detailing like there, or you get little flat details, or like some stippling, like deer foot type detailing brushes there. Now I'll go through a few that I use and what they can do for you. I'm just using some scrap canvas here. Okay, brushes for trees. What sort of trees can you paint with brushes? Well, I know I can paint like, you know, like a conifer type of tree like this or a simple tree that's out with foliage all over it type of tree like that. Uh, also, you get your evergreen trees. I don't do many of them because where I live, I don't get to see them, but you also got your evergreen trees. So I'll show you at least some of these type of trees and bushes that you can paint with your brushes. I'm gonna use the brushes that I have. Okay, I've got some tree colors there, your basics. Let's say the trees are green. So I've got sap green, yellow ochre, and I've got a black and a white. So you simply wanna use this method to paint any tree, whether it's a shrub or foliage or bushes in the background. Grab the brush you want to create the shape with. Now I'm going to use my deer foot because it looks like the horse's hoof foot and that's why they call it a deer foot. Different sizes of these. I like this one because it can do lots of little freckles. Any brush that's going to give that freckle look, you can use. It doesn't have to be a deer foot. I'm using this because it's what I've got. Now I'm just going to grab a flat. Sometimes I use flats to mix. So we want to start the basis of our tree. Let's get some green. The tree is going to be green. I start with darks and slowly add the light colours. So we get some black into this and we're just simply going to mix up our green blocking in of any bush you want to do. So there you go. I use a flat. You can use a flat to brush mix. Now simply pick up the brush you're going to use to create the bush. So I'm stamping that into it. You might need a little bit of water on your brush, not too much, don't ever over water it. You need to practice, practice is the key. The brush is loaded up, let's say this bush here I was talking about, we've got a ground, we're gonna create a bush. So just simply create the shape. I wanna go up, so this is gonna be like a conifer. Okay, get it all the way up there. There we go. Have little windows in it, windows are these little holes. Okay, if you have it all solid, it can look like a big stamp in your painting and you want to try as you go through your art journey to get realistic features within your art. Now, they don't always have to be perfect like they come out of a mould. You can have a big bulgy bit on one side of it if you want. And there is the ground. Simply shadow it in, whether it's on snow or whatever. You've done that. Now, because it's acrylic, you can dry every layer. <sighs> I just dried that. Now I'm gonna start making the green with some highlights. So I'll grab some of the green and add the yellow ochre. I use the yellow ochre. You can use cadmium yellow medium if you want, but yellow ochre gives you a realistic green and highlights. It's not really loud yellow and cartoony looking. 
So give your yellow ochre a go. It's always good to have yellow ochre in your painting colors there. Okay, so there's our green. It's looking more like a real green. I've just brush mixed that again with a flat brush. I find flat brushes for acrylics quite handy to mix. Now that deer foot, because I made that tree with this brush, I've cleaned it out and I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm not gonna go and pick up something totally different and try and get the highlights in there. You need darks to accent your lights. Now, you've got your dark mapped in. Highlights always go to the very edge. So I'm not gonna start here, it's gotta go right up to the very edge. And you'll see just what this does. Leave a lot of black in there. Okay, bit there, come around here. Now remember I said you can make it any shape you want. I deliberately put this bulge here. Watch how I can make that come forward from the actual tree itself. Practice these procedures. Boom, there we go. Get it way out in the air there, way out there. Now I've left the first coat there and this is the second coat. Now I'll just dry that and we'll add some highlights to finish that simple bush off. So I've wet that brush, I haven't even washed it. I'm just gonna pick up the yellow now, the yellow ochre and I'm gonna stamp this around, get a bit of that into there just to get it a, a highlighty color. I don't want it pure yellow ochre, I want it mixed with that green still. Now same principle again, way up the top. Let's just get this subtly highlighted. Bang in there. Now I might put a little bit of white in this just to show it up a bit. And now I'm gonna bring this forward. There we go, leaving a lot of the darks. Now I said I'm gonna put some white in there just to show you. I'm gonna pull some of the white into that and just get a brighter value of that, a tinted value of that. It simply easily does it, gently tint that bush. Now this was a deer foot. There's so many other brushes that can do a shrub like this, but it's pretty much a realistic color. It's not loud and cartoony. Before you do your final highlighting, you can scratch or put in some little trunks if you really desire to. Okay, next brush I'm gonna use is a flat. Okay, I use these if you're familiar with my videos to do palm tree. So I'll show you how I use a, do a palm tree for a beginner. And I'm gonna add some black into that just to get the base color down first. So pretty much what I did with the green, I'm just blackulating it. What's blackulate mean, Ian? It just means I'm adding black to the color. That's little buddy there. Every now and then you might see him in my videos asking annoying questions that you always want to ask. So a flat brush, watch what this can do for a palm tree. You've got it loaded up. Simply bring the palm tree where you want, let's say about there. That's your trunk of your palm tree. Get it up there and then if anything, you want the top a lot thinner than the base. It can come down and give it a reasonably wider base. Now do know palm trees can grow very long and tall as well. So you don't want it too fat at the bottom straight away like I did there. Anyway, there's your palm tree. Now use the same color. We're just mapping it all in first. And watch what I use the flat for. I come from the middle, I just come around, scratch and let it break away. This is, I find, the easiest way for a beginner can do a palm tree. Get your frongs where you want them, however long you want them. Don't have your paint too watery. Scratch it down, come along again, scratch it down, come along and scratch it down. We'll put another one all the way up here, up, scratch it down. The wind gets into these frongs and it can grow them all willy-nilly like that one there and like this one here. Now I always put a little signature scraggler down there like that and let's say Another one coming forward here. Well, not too long. There we go. You've got your palms in. Now, look at the middle. It does look a bit undernourished. Just grab your brush, put little points in there, little points, and you're just making it busy. This is just a basic palm tree a beginner can learn. Okay? Now, you dry that. <sighs> And then we can add some subtle highlighted colors here and there on the trunk 
and on the actual frongs. Now I've added some white into that mix there, just a gray color, but not too loud. Just for the trunk, I wanna slightly touch the edge and this flat can help me get that right around the circumference of our trunk there. It's not too loud, okay? There you go, that's it. That's your trunk. Now we have our greens here, we can take advantage of that. We'll grab some of this green for our frongs. I'll wet that just a little bit. Everything on the canvas is dry, so I'm still using the flat, whichever size I used for my tree, whether it's a small, medium or large brush or a small, me or a small, medium, large tree. Now work out, I don't have to come everything from the middle because some stuff's got to overlap. So we'll bring this along the edge, hiding the dark edge, simply let it break right in all those dark colours there. And it's adding depth and realism to your frong. Prong, frong. Now this one here, I can bring in front of it, go right to the edge there, right on the edge, break your paint up. Get this sitting on top of that dark color you put there. Just a flat brush. This one here can come down. There we go. And I'm simply gonna do this to all the prongs. Straight down, grab another one. Hiding a lot of that dark color, that's just adding the depth within your painting. Probably a bit on there. Okay, give that a dry. So we've got our yellow ochre. Now, I might just put a little bit of cadmium yellow light into that as well, just to really honeycone it up a bit. And simply work out things that you want in front and behind. And we're just gonna slightly highlight bits of this. Now you grab a cereal packet and practice doing your brush strokes. Let's say you wanna practice palm trees, conifer trees, shrubs, trees, little plants or grass. Practice them all, work out what brush you use for it and what strokes you did and you'll remember. And then we're just gonna grab a simple bit of white in that. I'll just show you why. This really brings it home. See here, you might wanna put a little bit of light somewhere, just hitting the edges of stuff. I don't know, it's up to you. Some bits of light poking around in there, bits of stuff scraggling in front. Get yourself a cereal packet, do some practicing. All your art requires a lot of practice. There's a basic, simple palm tree with a flat brush. Now you might have a little, this was a flat, it's a little scrumbling brush, you might have something like that. These are good for little shrubs. So let's take advantage of what we've got on the canvas here and we'll put some shrubs in. So we've got our dark green over here. I'm gonna spray my canvas so I don't lose all this paint. So it doesn't dry on me. And we're going to pretty much do some shrubs. This is great, fantastic for shrubs, okay? So we're going to load it up. It's a bit like the deer foot, the way it's all spayed out at the end. Let's say you want to put something in front of a tree. You can create the shapes you want. Create some shrubs right in front of the tree there. Get darkness there and come on the ground there like that. Let's do some more. Maybe a bit bigger one there. I'm just stamping it around in a kind of a shrubby way along there and let's say I'm putting another one here in the front there. There's the ground there, there's a lot of, I'm gonna do this just to emulate the ground, okay? Just pulling it like that, you'll see. Now there's a shrub there. Simply dry your work and wash that brush. Just to change the colors up a bit, I'm grabbing the sap green again, and I'm using a flat brush to mix it, and I've got some cadmium yellow light. And this will be my green. It'll be a different flavor green for those little shrubs there. Now I'll get this onto the canvas, onto my brush, so I can get it onto the canvas. 
Work out how inky you need your brush. Don't over ink it and don't under ink it. If you, that's a practice within itself as well. Learning how much water to put on your brush when you've mixed your paint. Hope for the best and blob it on and make a dog's breakfast out of it. You're that person that's saying, why does it work for him but not for me? That's because you're not practicing. And I don't mean to be condescending when I say you gotta practice. It's, you just have to practice. Now we're gonna put one, two and three in front. So we'll get this and we'll simply use this to highlight that little shrub there in front of the tree there. There we go. This one here, I'm doing just the tops of it coming. Oh, see, that's very wet. See what it's done there? I'm not happy with that. Why did I do something? I went and put too much water in it. So I'm just getting some stiffer paint now. And if you muck it up, you can always get that dark color again and put the darker colors in. Now I'm simply gonna grab this front one that I said I'll put there, put that there on the ground. Now it still looks a bit mishy-mashy. Don't worry about that, give that a dry. And we're simply gonna mix that now with some more yellow. So here we go, making it more brighter, more highlighted. I've washed it and I'm just loading it up now. So I'm stipping it in there because I want it in all those hairs there, okay? And then simply highlight this. Now highlighting is a bit less. Come in front of that tree there. That's looking good. See the darks help? Leave the darks in there. Highlight the top of it. Coming around here, highlight it. There you go, that's enough. Now I'm gonna put that other one in front and watch how it comes to life knowing how to shape little bushes, how to plan them will help. And then simply grab a bit of the white just to mint that up a bit. Too loud can really spoil your detailing and highlighting. We're just going to dance this on the top now of those little shrubby bush things, whatever they are, right on the very top. And you can see how we've got dimension within them. There we go. They can come around there, I suppose. We have three little shrubs, and I did that just with a munted up, it was a flat brush, but now it's all munted up. Now clouds, we wanna know what's a good brush to paint clouds with? Yeah, what is a good brush to paint clouds with, Ian? Yes, good question, and I'm gonna answer that. Down here, I would use, to paint a simple, but a realistic cloud, a beginner can do, I'm gonna use a putter on a brush. I'm gonna use a blending brush. And I'm also going to use a fan brush. Now simply get the putter on a brush, grab some craft white. It's important to have this. You can't do it on a dry raw canvas. And up here, let's emulate a bit of a sky up here. So this goes on the canvas like so. Just to I won't destroy that because I want to take a photo of this for the thumbnail. So this stuff is the primer for a sky. Then paint your sky the colour you want your sky to be, whether it's going to be a warm sky or a cool sky. What's a warm sky and a cool sky, Ian? Cool sky is blues and a warm sky is like the sunsetty colours. Now I've just wiped that brush and I'm simply going to pick up my cool sky colour, which is cerulean blue in this case. And you start at the top of your sky and you simply paint your sky. But I'm just gonna put it on for this. I don't have much room here. There's our sky color. Once you put this on, you smoothen it off with the tip of your brush. Okay, there we go, done. Grabbing some titanium white out of the tube, good quality titanium white, not that craft stuff. Then I'm going to use the fan brush and I simply chisel it onto the edge of my fan brush and this is how I do basic clouds, simple clouds, something realistic. Now that's still wet and we can put, let's say a cloud here, just stamp it on, fumble around, make a body with this fan brush. Why I use a fan brush? Because as I'm fumbling around, it's you might not notice but it's leaving pockets of blue there. It's not one solid blob of white. I see I've got blue here, windows of blue there. And this is only a small one. 
There's me cloud. Blending brush, you want to blend that down. So I'll blend the bottom pretty flat. I like to give some clouds over your head a bum, just like so. And it's important to have a cloth or a rag to blend and wipe your blending brush as you go. So I'm going to use a corner of the brush, turmoil and twist this around, creating brighter values and leaving duller values there. Sit that down and we're creating a sweeping soft reasonably good realistic looking cloud in our sky. I'll just pull that right across off there. There we go. And sometimes, see the top? You can always go up there and tickle them. Now like our shrubs and trees, clouds also need detail as well. So I'm going to grab a bit of red violet here, mix some of this with the blue to get sort of a purple weathered looking colour. You know how clouds have that grey or that weathery colour within them, just use this to give it the second coat of its detail. You can do this, you practice it, okay? Simply come to your cloud and if anything, I prefer to put this at the bottoms. Just gingerly dance that along the bottom and tassel it up in the body of the cloud here and there, giving it some weather. Simple like that. Okay, grab your blending brush. And you want to get that down, but leaving it there. You're getting rid of all those edges so it's merging with that white. I'll just show you, coming all the way along here. Don't put too much on, because you don't want it to kill the white. So we've got our second layer there. And when you practice, you know what to do when you're discovering parts in your brush movements in your painting. We've got that done. Now we simply go back to the fan brush with the white, but I need to wash all that dirty colour off. So we've washed our brush, we're picking up the white again, and we're simply going to add the yumminess. Like in the shrubs was highlights, but in your cloud I call it the yumminess. And dance this roughly, so you're joining that duller white and that grey colour within your cloud now. And then this stuff, you just simply grab your blending brush again. You leave the loudness of that there, but you're getting rid of the hard edges of it all. So I'm just simply getting rid of any hard edges of it all. And these three brushes that I use, I use them all the time when I want to make clouds. So you're leaving some of the vibrancy there. Don't kill it. And you get a reasonable cloud. Okay, let's say you want to create a waterfall. I go to a larger flat brush you would simply put in the darker colour of the waterfall and highlight it with your watercolour. So I'm going to wet this brush a bit. I've got that darker colour I used in the cloud. I'll take advantage of that. And I'll use that for my darker colour of the waterfall. And let's say you've got a waterfall. I don't know, this is wider than the waterfall. Let's say your waterfall starts from there and your waterfall is going to come down here. Now I've got to dry that sky because it's very wet. But I'm going to just stamp all this on for now. And I'll just show you. So there, because my waterfall is going to actually come in from the sides of this. Okay, and you can, let's just say that sky now is our actual lake or water, whatever we got our body of water somewhere out there. Join it up a bit. There we go. This is the darkness, the depth within your waterfall. Now the sky colour there, we still need the, um, let's just say, because when you're doing a waterfall, you do have water here. So let's just quickly paint in some water for our waterfall. I'm just using any flat brush here. Let's just say that's our water. And with water, I use flats to put bits like this in and then simply water for it like that and you get bands of light or darts in your water. Now I've got the same brush again but now I've got a long round, it's a hog bristle long round one. I'm going to use these two brushes to finish the waterfall off. I'm going to first load up the flat brush and we can put the littlest bit of blue in there just to taint it, just on one part of that pile. Same principle as the trees in the cloud, you're putting one, two, three layers. The base colour, medium colour and the highlighter colour. And now we just want to bring our waterfall down. So bring the water down 
leaving some of the light, I mean the dark colour on the edge. Bring it down, bring it down, turn your brush around, bring it down. This is very dry kind of paint I'm using here, bring it down. Now see the top? We'll kind of weld that into our body of water there and then put our pieces and scallops of, I don't know what I've done to this piece of canvas, it's sitting in the other room there, I've just grabbed it for some scrap, it's all buckled. Just kind of taper it out like this on your water, just so it doesn't look like it's added there and something's not quite right. Now using the same brush, you then go to the pure white. So I've pulled some pure white out, now I'm loading up that same flat brush that I created the water for with. And we're simply going to bring some of this over our waterfall there. Come across, down. Now what you can do with a flat brush to make waterfalls look a little bit realistic as well, see how that's paint breaking up? As water drops, it pulls itself apart. So you can put these kind of lines of some of the water just kind of breaking up as it's coming down the waterfall. If you like to paint certain things that move like clouds, trees, water, just sit, have a picnic and look at them. Watch what's happening. And now I've got that round brush I told you about. I'm gonna simply grab some of the blue color, the water color. I don't want any water in it. I just want this to create a bit of depth underneath. Roughly where it's fumbling into the water. So it's pretty much here fumbling into the water. Because you don't have it right on the edge. It's, there's, there's space behind a waterfall. A waterfall isn't always flat against something. And just remembering these little facets as you do your art, you'll, it'll make it look more believable having it in the right spot. Not, if I finish that waterfall right there, it'll look funny, but because I've brought it into the lake, the body of water, once it's finished, you will see. Now, I'm just simply whirl and scrumble and lightly blending and fading this into all the bottom of that waterfall there. Now, it's important with acrylics. I've given that a dry. I've picked up pure white, pure white. And this is just gonna slowly, I'll get some of the white off it. There's too much on there. And I wanna slowly just grind this into that dirty color I put there. And it's gonna turn this white tainted and dirty, which is what I want it to do. So there you go, I've done that. Now I'm picking up pure white. And as I added the yumminess to the clouds, I wanna kind of do the same to this. It's bringing this in front of that water behind it, watch. Just make your little pillowy bits here and there. Don't think about it, just kind of do it, leaving some of the darks behind, and you've got nice, vibrant white coming forward from that waterfall. There we go, let me have a look at that. That's looking like frothy, agitated stuff. And then in general, I normally get a flat brush, same white, and I'll do some very long but lineal ripples coming out of that, feathering away into the lake down below. So they're the brushes I use for a waterfall. Okay, we're gonna paint some rocks, so let's just grab a simple bit of black and we'll put some white in there. So we're gonna make a, just a basic gray. And this'll be our base color to our rock. So I've got a flat filbert here now. You can use, you might want a detailed brush or a flat brush. I find a filbert better for me because it's rounded. And let's say I wanted to put a rock in the water here somewhere. So see that shadow? I'll take advantage of that shadow. The rock's about here. Now see, the filbert's rounded so I can make some kind of rock there like so. Now with the rock, I want it in the water with some dimension coming around. Then I'll just simply block it in. I'm using a simple filbert brush here. Both sides. And I think I'll put something just on the other side. So we'll use the filbert again, come up, make something cranky, come around, keeping that purpley dark color there, come in front of the waterfall, but if you want, into the water, 
Don't have it flat on the water because it's close to us. You need the bit of dimension there going around like that. And then simply block your rock in. And let's just say, to make it interesting, there's another rock here. So just block it in, block it in. Use your brush to create the bottom. Now grabbing some just pure black, I've got another filbert still, but this is a smaller filbert now, so I'm using filberts. Filberts are the ones that look like that, with the hairs on them. If you're not sure what a filbert is. If you're not sure what anything is, simply YouTube search it, and there's so many people that show you everything. Now, I've got the black, so what I want to do, I've got a smaller one, because I want the bottoms of my rocks, if anything, darker. Now this rock here, we're simply going to put dark behind that one that I put in front and dark at the base. Pull it up. Get some darkness around these movements that I put here. There we go. I'll just turn the light up so hopefully you can see that. So there's our rock colour that we use. So we'll just simply grab some white and get a brighter value of that. Lighter value of that. Nothing too bright and loud. And then we're going to simply just gingerly highlight what we put on there. Using this, so I want to go, where, where are we? I'm going to, so this round bit here, I'll go right to the top of that. I want it to be scratchy. And this can just scratch it up, get the light of that off the brush, see? And just scratch this part of that rock in front of the other part of it. Let it come down. Boom. Put something in front of that dark bit there. Uh, we've got some bits here getting hit with light there, coming up from the dark bits there, maybe a bit in here. Very little is on there, very little. But you can see, see the dark, I'll bring some of it over the dark. And then this rock here, we're going to put that in front. So he's going to simply go to the top of that shape there and let it scratch down. Simple. And then the same for here, we've got probably this bit here we'll just have in front of the whole lot of those two sides. So go right to the edge, don't leave a dark edge there. And then just simply scraggly rock you like that down there, like so. Bit over there, bit here. And then fumble up some from the darkness as well. Now another brush that come in handy is a liner brush, a script liner or a liner brush. Have it wet and I'm going to simply grab some, I don't know, some white over here. I want the proper titanium white, so I'm going to wet some of that. I'll let a little bit of blue go with it because you can use this for so many things. So now just with the rocks, I'll show you with the rocks for now. Now with these brushes, simply twist it and see the end there, the tip. I'm loading it onto that tip there. Look at that. I've got paint on the tip. Now we could take advantage here and there's like water. So let's just say some water hit there and it's just dribbling down the rock. Let it find the bit of the rock and it's dribbling into the water there. Boom. Right away from the rock. There's bits of water sprayed and it's just probably running down the rock. This is just detail. Something you can use a liner for. A script liner. Okay. Dropping into the water there. There's just water pulling up into that little crevice of the rock and it's kind of dribbling out everywhere. The finer you can get those dribbles, the better it looks to the eye. So we'll get a little bit more here, right into the water there. Now I haven't done it here, but underneath that rock, if that was in a real painting, I'll have that kind of um, dark. It looks like it's floating on the water at the moment, but we've just got bits of moisture coming down that rock. And let's say this rock here, so there's bits just pulling down. Just let it branch off into your water there. Some is on here, just dribbling down. Just bits of moisture. And let's say some is pulling up in there and dribbling all the way down as well. Just 
you can see how that detail brush has made those rocks look more um, I'll put a bit of water pooling up in there so it'll make sense it just didn't start from nowhere you can see how it's given your painting more realism okay this brush again this is another filbert this is the hog bristle filbert this is going to come in handy mix up let's say you want to do you got trees in the mid ground of your painting which a lot of us do have I do it a lot I've seen a lot of people that I follow when I started painting do it as well a filbert brush is good for this what you simply do is load up your base color for your trees I want to bring some trees here let's say they're going to come down like that into the painting so you quickly block it in you've, you've blocked it in bringing it into the middle of the painting and then I use the filbert to get me trees out there the canopy tops right you're doing this out there right get a lot of air in between them before you come back down to your solid bit a lot of air up there and then you solid up so you don't see that hard line you sort of vanishing that with your brush movements put some up there like so simply give that a dry I've got black on the same brush now I want to put the darker elements within that tree so I'm going to use this brush the same filbert brush and find out where I want dark pockets so I'm just going to randomly put them anywhere kind of if anything what I am putting in the body of it I'm kind of bringing it up to the top there as well in a sort of a fashion but I'm not turning left oh I know why you said that Mr Bowie yeah you got me little buddy you got me on that one so I'm just adding you need darks within your trees and you simply dry that and then we will highlight it I've got the same paint again the sap green the green that I had mixed with the black and I'm going to just use cadmium yellow medium this time just so it won't clash with the other greens up there and we're simply going to highlight it so we've done our base color the dark color and now we're simply highlighting it and in the same fashion right at the very tips don't leave the tips dark and then you can start leaving bits of dark bodies there okay right at the tips bring it in sit stuff right in front and come down and the first green that we put on we're leaving a lot of that there we're kind of dribbling over the bar, the black but in the same brush motion the same stamping motion and this filbert brush is excellent for doing trees like this in your background and I'm going to show you one extra step you can do to a tree to really give it realism with another brush now you can see I've left dark pockets there now I'm going to leave the bottom dark you need the bottoms dark now we'll simply really just highlight that to finish it off so using the same brush I'm just grabbing that the rest of the cadmium yellow what's in the brush get a little bit of water in there a little bit of water not too much just enough to transfer it from the brush and this one is less so to the very tops again crisp up the tops where you want it highlighted here and there just here and there okay I want to bring this chunk right in front of that kind of there over that dark bit now see this big chunk here I'll just go over that big body of leaves there to make it look like the lights hitting the high points and the darkness is left in the low points not everywhere just somewhere squint your eyes look at your painting and feel where you need more or less so you've done that to a bush and you might think you know what I want a bit more realistic look to it grab yourself a fine detailed brush and the color you highlighted it with which was this one I've made it a lot more brighter I've put a bit more yellow and just a bit more white in it and I've, you can see I've added water to it get it to the tip of the brush let's just find a section here I won't do all of it I'll just do a section and this you put the most smallest little dots like that is the camera picking them up and this probably not going to look as good with that white background you do such little 
keep twisting your brush as you load it so it's not doing, look, see I've got stamp patterns there, and you're just simply putting little leaves getting highlighted. And you're just simply adding more light, hitting some more closer, vibrant, in-focus leaves. It just adds more detail. And there we go. Kind of put them in a fashion where they're going to make sense. Don't sort of go too randomly. You need to keep squinting your eyes and looking at it. Now, if I had a darker background, let's say a blue sky or something, in front of this, they would sit out in front of the blue sky there like that, but because it's white, I didn't know I was going to do this, they're not standing out, but you, you're able to put these, let's say the bottom, see the bottom dark area? It's just something right in front of there. Down here. Just little dots. Now it might take you several hours to do a painting, it doesn't matter. There's no rush to do a painting. Take your time and you'll get wonderful art. Now you can see the difference how this looks more real than up there. It's just knowing these f steps you can go to and what brush is going to do it. And normally nine times out of 10, a little liner like this can do some beautiful detailed leaf work. So here's pretty much a display of the brushes I use. The deer foot, the flat filbert, the flats, the long round, uh, hog bristle filbert, a little scrumbly brush, different varieties of flats that I use for water and um, the palm trees, fan brush, me put her on a brush, and of course the blending brush for the clouds. Now you can look at this picture, you can work out and go and practice what brushes are going to make the best rocks for you, the best clouds for you, the best palms, the best shrubs, little, little shrubs there and tr tr medium sized trees here. Something with a lot of practice, you definitely can do it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, comment below. Give me a comment and ask me a question or simply tell me what you want to tell me about my channel here. And just remember to tell your friends if you like what you've seen on my channel. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.